So character, actions matching words, consistency. You know, now a person could make a mistake. Hey, I'm supposed to, I, I'm going to call you tonight and I fell asleep. You know, we're all human. We're going to make mistakes, but there's consistent actions match their words. Another aspect of character is you've healed your past relationships. You don't bring the trauma and drama from a past relationship into a new relationship. Um, to me, good character represents a person who's generous, who's kind. They come from that place of abundance and they don't come from a place of negativity. They come from a place of kindness. Um, person of good character, they communicate clearly without being right. In other words, it's not about being right. They communicate as a win-win type of communication. To me, that re represents good character. Um, they believe trust is paramount in relationship. And as I said earlier, trust isn't just about fidelity in relationship. Trust is your feelings matter to me as much as my own feelings matter to me. In other words, you, I am always looking out for your best interest. That's a fundamental in trust. And for a person with good character, that's a paramount in their life. Um, they don't use people. In other words, if, if they are not clear about commitment, then they don't engage in casual relationships. They only engage in relationships where there's a potential for going the distance. They're not in it for the hookups, the short runs, the situationships, the friends with benefits. And again, this is my interpretation of good character. They have their act together. Um, they're introspective. They do work on themselves. And lastly, amongst uh, there's dozens more I could come up with. They have a level of empathy. They genuinely care about, they have empathy, humanity for others beyond themselves. They don't operate from a myopic, self-centric place. And that to me is the most important thing to consider when evaluating someone. Ah, oh, I just said a mouthful. <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a very mature adult, which um, we get to be at certain stages in our life. No, not How everybody. You... It's not age, really? by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know twenty year olds are far more adult than sixty year olds. Gotcha. Me as well. How do you find this high quality person? How do we find high quality partners? Well, it starts by being what you want to attract. It's not as if these people are hanging out at the street corner or something like that. So how do you find them? First, be what you want to attract. Set the standard of what it is you want and eliminate people quickly that don't meet that standard. And the more you vibrate at that level of what you want to attract, you have a greater potential of attracting that into your life. But again, we're talking about to be a real emotional grown up takes a lot of introspective and inner work. And most people are lazy. You know, human here in the United States, we are one of the I mean, as much as we've accomplished and it's amazing what we've done, human beings can be incredibly lazy, too, particularly in their romantic life. They there's this. Disney narrative that it should be easy. No, it's going to require effort, Herculean effort on some cases. But the reward is hopefully you find a partner that goes the distance with you. Let's dive into that because I was actually just watching a podcast and they were talking about um, relationships being difficult or being easy. And there were, there were basically, there's people who believe that just like your relationships are difficult, they're supposed to be difficult, but it's two people to work on those problems and build a healthy um, relationship. And there's some people who believe that when you have chemistry, the, um, the vibe is strong between the two of you, then things will flow easily within a, a relationship. Which one is correct? Like, what is the balance between the two? Well, I, I want to be clear about something. I, if, if I intimated this, then let me retract that. Um, I, I, the work is not you know, having to continually, if two people have friction and you're using sandpaper to smooth it out, I'm not remotely even suggesting that. The work is always individual work. It's learning to catch yourself, to catch your triggers, to not act in a righteous manner, to not act with criticism, to not act with contempt, to not stonewall your partner, to not get defensive. So it's always inner work, two people doing inner work. Now, Two people have done work, they're going to trigger each other. 
But if you're in a relationship where you're both all in, and this is, we're gonna, we should talk about this a little bit more, the concept of being all in. You're all in and you say, okay, do we want to be right or do we want to be happy? And we might have a difference of opinion. And sometimes it's okay to disagree. It's, agree, it's okay to agree to disagree. Okay, that's okay too. But you listen to your partner's point of view. You acknowledge their point of view to them and you accept their point of view view as being true for them. And you both do this for each other. And you might hit an impasse, but that's okay. If you listen, acknowledge, and validate or, uh, the person's point of view. A lot of times it's usually, I'm right, you're wrong. Most couples go into therapy, couples therapists, and it's always this. It's their fault. No, it's their fault. It's their fault. You see, they're not looking in the mirror. So coming back to um, your question, people that approach relationship based on chemistry, chemistry is great. There's nothing like it. You know, there's nothing like just feeling like off the charts connection with someone. But let me tell you, if you don't share the same values, if your lifestyles aren't blendable and you aren't with someone who's emotionally constipated, it's going to be a lot more hell than the few moments of pleasure you get. So, relationships in and of itself don't take work except for the work you do within yourself. That's my point of view.